Today's video is brought to you by PCBWay, where not only can you get beautiful PCBs made, but you can also do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. Check them out in the link in the description to get a $5 coupon on your first purchase. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Patrick with Stacking Layers. So today's video, I'm gonna go over how to set up multiple printer control that are not using the same host computer. So there's two main things when it comes to uh, multiple printers with Clipper. Um, and the most common that you may hear a lot about is setting up separate instances. And what that means is that you have two printers that are both being run on the exact same, let's say Raspberry Pi or host computer. Um, and that is where you have literally, they call it an instance because there's two separate instances of Clipper running at the same time, in controlling two different printers. Well, this system, I will go a little bit over how that works too, because it kind of ties in with this. But with this system I'm going to be showing today is, is setting up two printers that are on completely different host computers. So we have the pad seven here that's running on this, which is the pad seven. And then we also have a Voron that is running completely separate is not attached. You see, there's no other wires except for the power. And this is running on a Raspberry Pi and that's sitting behind me. So it's not plugged in. It's only accessing it through the network, the same as you would through your browser using main seller fluid. Uh, and so this is what I'm going to be showing you how to set up. So let's jump over to the computer and I will show you how to get that going. Okay. So in your machine settings, what we're going to be looking for is the clipper screen dot config. Um, if you do not see this file, don't be alarmed. It's not a problem. All you have to do is either create the file, which you can do using this icon here, create a new file. It must be named clipper screen dot C O N F with a, with a capital K and a capital S, just like it's shown here. Easier in my opinion is to just come over to your clipper screen and go hit more and clipper screen and just change one of the settings in here. Um, for instance, you want to, show heater power, change that. And then you should see that the file automatically pops up. And what it's doing is it's creating this green zone here where it says, do not edit below this line. And as you can see, there's the setting that we changed. So if I were to go to turn that off, then this would just get removed because it's default setting. Um, I wanted to point this part out because this is actually very important. If you have already done a lot of editing in the clipper screen itself, using the settings on screen, they get put into here. So if you mess something up, if you accidentally remove one of these lines, for instance, um, one of these hashtags, these are not comments. These are special characters, uh, like pre-saved, auto-saved um, configurations. So if you mess up something in here and you remove something wrong, all of your settings will get messed up. So, so leave that alone. Don't mess anything here. What we're going to be doing is up on the top here, and that's where we're going to start our edit. So you want to give yourself some spaces just so you have good room to keep that area separate. Okay, important. So let's get into how to set this stuff up. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, PCBWay. If you're someone who loves tinkering, designing, and creating, you'll definitely want to check out PCBWay. PCBWay isn't just about PCB manufacturing. They've got a wide range of services to cater to creators just like you. From crafting intricate prototypes using many forms of 3D printing to precision machine parts through CNC machining and so much more, PCBWay has got you covered. A really nice part is their online quoting system. It lets you see the cost estimates for the services you need, allowing you to plan your projects without any surprises. As for quality, PCBWay takes it seriously across all their services and do their best to ensure all your designs will meet the highest standards. Beyond services, PCBWay offers a supportive community. Their forums and dedicated support team are there to help you to navigate through your creative journey. If you're intrigued and want to know more about PCB Way services and how it can benefit your projects, check out the link in the description. I want to give a big thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the video. Okay, welcome back. So here's what we're going to be doing. This is going to be a very simple, but it requires a couple bits of explanation. And basically I'm making this video because of this. It seems that a lot of people get confused by the documentation and what is being said. So the first thing we're going to be doing is setting up the first printer. So let's assume that the, um, the pad seven is your main printer. This is, the printer is running on the same host that clipper screen is running on. Okay. So the re the way to set that one up, we first define that as a printer, obviously. So let's click on here. So if we start off by giving it a, a square bracket and typing in printer. So we're saying we have a new printer to, to have to, to name basically, and we give it a name. So I'm just going to name this pad seven, pad seven. The next thing what we need to do is give it the uh, the host address and we're the host address is the Moonraker host. And to do that, we just type in Moonraker underscore host with a colon and a space. 
Now, Moonraker is the web server that we use to communicate to Clipper. Um, I know it gets really confusing because of the same names, Clipper Screen and all that stuff, but Clipper Screen is technically a web um, interface or a, um, it's basically just, it's just a simple GUI. It's the same thing as using here, we're using main cell, right? To, to attach to our Clipper machine, but this is not Clipper. All they are are interfaces and Moonraker is the web server that it's actually talking to. It's Moonraker doing all the magic behind the scenes. And that's why we're using Moonraker host. But the next part is important because this is where it starts confusing people. In the documentation, it's very kind of cookie cutter and they use the home address. So that's 127.0.0.1. Uh, and that anytime you see that address, that basically just means an IP address for the computer that you're attached to. So Moonraker and Clipper screen and your printer are all running on the same host. So that's why it uses the home address. It's just a, basically a gateway to uh, talk to other programs all in one system. So that's pretty simple um, once you understand that part. So anytime you see that 127001, that is the home address of the computer you're on. Um, the next part, this is the port. So we again, Moonraker, port, and colon. So the Moonraker port, this is where it becomes important if you're using multiple instances. Remember, that's two printers on the exact same host computer. Um, so if you had them running that way, this is a, a very important number. Regardless, it is important because it has to match whatever Moonraker has. Um, but it's even more important if you have multiple hosts. And so I'll explain. So default, anytime you set up a new fresh uh, Clipper instance with Moonraker and everybody, um, and you're up and running, the default is going to be 7125. That is what it always uses as default. Unless you've changed something, that's what it's going to be. Now, when you set up multiple instances, this is the number that actually changes. So your first uh, printer will be with uh, 7125. And then your next one will be 7126, for example, or 27, or whatever you decided to put in there. Um, so if you have, as an example, two printers on the same host, you would do this um, pad seven and then the host as the home host and then your port as your main original port. And then your next one will be the same um, with a new name for printer and then two six. Pretty simple. But we're leaving these at 25, uh, 7125 because they are different hosts completely. So they're using the default port number. Hopefully that makes sense. Easiest way to think about it, a port is just like a port at a, at a harbor for boats. I, mean, I don't know if that makes it easier, but you have, you know, you have your harbor where everybody, all the boats come up to and a different port is each area where the boat parks is a port. So you have multiple ports and they all come into the same harbor, right? It's the same part of land. That's kind of what this port is. I don't know, maybe that's a bad analogy. Hopefully you guys understood what that meant. <laughs> Let's move on. So the second one, like I said, if you were going to be setting up on the instances, this multiple instances, you just copy this, paste it in, change the name. So pad 7.2 is the second one on the same computer, same host, and then change that to that. And you're good to go. It'll be that simple. But like I said, we're using two different hosts all together. So I'm going to be attaching to my Voron. So let's just do that. Voron 2.4. And I found with this one, you can actually use spaces here. Normally you can't use spaces, but for this one, um, whatever you use in these names for so the pad seven and the Voron 2.4, those are going to be the, uh, the labels also for whatever you're attached to. So what the, like in the beginning of, this, of the video, you saw I had the two printers on my screen. That's where these label names come from. Okay, so now we have that. The next is the very important part, is this part here, host. Now, in the documentation, all it says is, define uh, if the, the host and the port if different from the default. Okay, that's great. Yeah, we get that. But what does it need to be, right? Um, with this, it actually is more simple than, than many may think. And all it literally is, is the IP address of whatever the printer is that you're attaching to. It is that simple. So if we were to come into here and attach to my Voron, type in the, the IP address, uh, if I can remember it, 21168. See if I can type here. And what is that? 86201, I believe this one is. Yeah. All right, so we have that IP address here, which I'll just go ahead and copy it. Oops. And so we're in my Voron, right? So that's the exact same thing we, we print here. Instead of home, because we're not on the same host computer, we want that. Now we do not want the HTTP stuff. We only want the pure IP address with nothing else. 
just like that. And with port, because I'm running a default setup, only a single printer on that host that it's um, the Voron is on, there's only one, so it's the same. So these ports are the same, but the ports are the same number. So let's just say this is the first port on the harbor, but they're two completely different harbors. So one is in, in Los Angeles and one's in New York. Okay, that's what the host IP address is. So we got here, Los Angeles, and we got in New York, and then we have those ports. That makes sense? That's how you set that up. Then it really is that easy. So now that we have the two different printers set up with their proper IP addresses, now all we have to do is restart. So I'll just transition over here so you can see a close up. When I hit save and restart, then you see it automatically restarts Clipper screen. And there we go. Now we have both printers on there and I can connect to my Voron. And as you can see, I'm not plugged into anything here, but I'm able to access my Clipper screen and I can even access uh, the camera. See how well my, uh, my IP or my uh, internet connection is. There we go. So now I have the camera. So what I think is really nice about this is that you can actually um, set this up and have, you know, you can, you're not limited to two, you can have four or six, or I don't know, I've never actually set up as many, I only have five total printers. So I, I've never done more than that. Um, or actually, I've never done more than four, to be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can set up multiples. Um, and you can have like a separate clipper or uh, a pad seven like this here, and have it with no printers literally plugged in and have this like in an office or in your living room somewhere else you want to monitor all your printers from in a completely separate area. As long as you're on the same network, you got yourself a centralized monitoring system that you can start, stop, and view things that are going on while it's happening. Pretty nice, right? Um, so that's how you would do it on a Clipper screen system. As a bonus, I'm gonna show you, you can do a very similar thing already in a uh, main cell or fluid. So this is kind of a bonus to the video. That, that part was the main focus. So if that's all you wanted, thank you for watching, but stick around, I'm gonna show you how to do even more. So let's get back over to main cell. So in main cell, also in fluid, they have the options of adding multiple printers just like Clipper screen can. Like I mentioned earlier, Clipper screen and main cell or fluid or all of these different things are just using Moonraker to attach or to get the information from Clipper and you know send and receive information. So they do all the same thing. They use Moonraker to interface and get that stuff. So because of that, of course, we can set up multiple printers here too. So the way to do that, you come into your, uh, your settings. Um, like I said, with Fluid, it's gonna be the similar thing, just a little bit visually different, but I think it's even called the same stuff. Um, so you go into your printers, add printer, and you wanna set the host name exactly the same way. Um, with the uh, main one, the one that you're in, you don't technically need to put it in on here because you're, go you're already gonna be in it, but to make it easy to transition back and forth, you could add it. Um, so with this one, it's actually nice because you don't have to put the IP. If you know the host name, you can just do it that way too. So this one is pad7.local. So if you previously use um, this type of an address to get to your printer, you can use it here. Uh, for some reason on the Clipper screen, I haven't had good success using that. So we use the actual IP address. But here we can use either or, this or the IP address, no problem. Again, make sure your port is the same. So if you had multiple instances, once again, um, it would be the same host name, but you do different ports. So you can have this is printer one and that's printer two, printer three, whatever it may be, okay? So we do that, we add the printer and we're good to go with that one. But now we wanna add our second printer. This is the one that's not attached to it. And we're gonna use, I'm gonna use the host name here. Again, you can use the IP address if you have the only that. Um, so this one is the Voron. Oh, local. And that's all we need to do here also, because again, same port, it's on a separate host. Add the printer, and it does it, and we're all good, we're set, and we can X out of here. And now that we've done that, you'll notice it added printers. So now we have both of our printers, and it also has a little arrow for a dropdown, so we can switch there too. So pretty cool, right? So now one more step, now that we have both of these printers, and you can even turn on the camera, um, all that fun stuff, so you can view, you can have all your printers set up here and view them all from one local area. Let's just turn all this off for now. But when we switch, then we kind of run into a slight problem. Because when we switch, you notice we're not, we're not here, we're not on the Voron um, moon rate, or sorry, uh, main cell. We're still using, I'll close that out, we're still using the pad seven. So we're in the pad seven, but controlling my Voron. 
Pretty cool, right? But if you notice, there's no printer, so how do you get back? Well, easy way, you can just come here. If you're only on two separate printers, you can just come here, hit enter, and it'll go back. Pretty simple, right? But you want to have your ability to come back this way. So let's go back over there. And it is as simple as doing the same thing on your other printer as you did on the first one. So you come into settings, come to printers. As you see, they're not in this one because we're on the second printer. And then you add them. So we'll just add the um, pad seven. Add printer. Now we're good. We don't technically have to have both of them on there because when we're in here, we just jump right back. But if you wanted to have them all, then of course, you would add both of them. So let's just do that just because. So actually what I'll do, let's delete that one. And I will show you that you can also just add the IP address. Again, without the HTTP stuff and add printer. There we go, X out, and now we have both, right? Pretty simple, right? Go to switch back, just go to switch. Now we're on that. And again, switch back to the other one, and we can go to that. And all the time we're still in the pad seven local machine. We're not using the, the Voron machine technically for, for using the, all of this interface. So pretty cool, right? So that's how you would do it. That's how, like I said, just a side bonus. Um, as you can see, now you have two printers or as many as you want. I, again, I don't know what the limit is. I've only had up to four of them. Um, I know it works before. I would assume it works a lot more. It all depends on, on the power of your system. If you can handle so many things, especially if you have the cameras turned on on all of them, that starts taking a lot of bandwidth. So that can start bogging things down. That will, that will determine how many you can have connected. But anyways, that's how you set up multiple printers on both a Pad7 or any clipper screen system or in a main cell or fluid system. Pretty cool, right? Let me know if that was helpful for you. Of course, drop any comments down in the comment section and let me know if you have any questions or something confused you, or maybe you thought I missed something or would like to know a little bit more. I'm more than happy to help out if I can. Um, don't forget to give PCB Way a check out. Their PCBs are really nice. I'm really happy with them. I Like I was showing at the beginning, I made these little PCBs because I'm trying to get some uh, uh, little sequin lights made for a, uh, what is it, the XOL or the Zola, however you're supposed to say that, the hot end. And I couldn't locally source finished boards, so I decided I'll take PCB away and get them myself and make them. The lights are not from them, but you can get an assembly option to where they will populate and actually build them completely for you. And they'll send you the complete board with everything installed. Pretty nice. It's a little more expensive, but I honestly, these things are a pain in the ass to get soldered on. Um, it was my first time ever doing this type of a solder job. Um, it's not easy. And uh, I really wish I would have paid the extra money to get the, um, the extra lights put on. I could have got like 60 of them finished cheaper than it would have cost to order and pay for shipping for just the three by themselves. So yeah, that was my mistake, but it's a fun experience learning to do the soldering and doing it myself. And I got lots of stuff now, lots of time to mess around with that and learn how to solder better. So it's not, it's not a lose. It's just, it would have been nicer to get them fully assembled and they offer that. So yeah, check them out. Anyways, enough of that. Again, thank you for PCB Waiter for helping out my channel. Check them out. And massive thank you to all my subscribers, all of you guys coming here and visiting. Um, it means a great deal for me to see you guys hitting that subscribe button. It really gives me more confidence to keep making these videos. And uh, yeah, drop again down in the comments. Let me know if you have any future videos you want to see, anything else news that you've been figuring out or trying to figure out and you need help. I'll see if I can make a video if I know how to help, okay? Again, thank you, thank you. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. And I'm gonna cut the video now so I don't ramble on like I like to do. And uh, yeah, so until next time, get out there, go make something. Thank you for watching.